All right, we're here with IBF President Daryl Peoples at the 30th annual IBF convention in Berlin, Germany. Uh, President Peoples, thank you for having Fight News along. Um, what are your uh, thoughts on the 30th anniversary uh, of the organization? It's a, it's a big one. Oh, it, it is a big one, and uh, we're having a good turnout, and I want to thank Fight News for being here again with us. Um, we're really excited this year. Uh, last year, we had, I think, 14 or 15 countries represented, and this year we have 24. So that's that's a good indication for us. That shows that the organization, organization is growing. Um, additionally, in the last three years, our membership has increased. So we're doing well on our convention numbers, and as you were with us in Hawaii and Las Vegas, I, I'm really excited that we're doing the same numbers that we've been doing in the past two years, and it just keeps growing and growing. So that's good, good news for the organization. Well, yeah, I, I was actually going to ask you, touched on uh, some subsequent questions. I was going to ask about uh, the increasing size of the delegates at the convention that are turning up, if that's reflective of both uh, membership uh, among the uh, com countries that are affiliated with the IBF growing, and as well as uh, ring officials that are joining up with the IBF, do you feel that those are that's a proportional uh, reflection? Yeah, it is a proportional uh, reflection. As you heard during the championship chairman's uh, report, the regional activity is just increasing by leaps and bounds, and I think the increase in membership and promoters registration shows in those numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, now, um, how important uh, it's been touched on a little bit in some of the talks we've had already uh, at the early stages of the convention. Uh, has it been uh, Japan's return to, to, to the IBF? Um, that's huge. Uh, as, as you know, Japan is more or less the hotbed of boxing in Asia. And for more than a decade, we didn't do any fights in Japan. Um, at this convention, we have members from the Japanese Boxing Commission and the Japanese Professional Boxing Association that have joined us. So that that's just a good indication of the growth of the organization. And they bought some officials, and, and it's, it's just huge for our progress in Asia to have uh, Japan back with us. And, and as you mentioned, Japan is the hotbed of boxing in Asia. So do you figure their... Uh, reaffiliation with the IBF will have a trickle-down effect among the other Asian countries, especially Thailand and, and Korea, where uh, Thailand's uh, pretty active, but Korea has been having some troubles with boxing. But do you feel that uh, Japan will maybe lead the way and, and others will follow? Oh, I think so. And, and speaking of Korea, we do have a representative in Korea that we appointed after last year's uh, convention in Hawaii. Um, we have David Yu, who's our Asian representative, and he's been planting the flags in a lot of other countries. And I think that just due to the proximity of Japan and the Japanese Boxing Promoters Association being here, I think it is going to have a trickle-down effect because these guys, hopefully at convention, will interact with each other, meet each other, and possibly come up with some things that will help mm -hmm. them and us as well. Now, the IBF has had a, a pretty solid presence in the whole Pan-Pacific region in Asia in terms of uh, Pan-Pacific titles and, uh, you know, regional titles of that nature. <clears throat> you mentioned there's been a long drought in Japan. Actually, you do have a current, uh, the IBF mini flyweight champion, Katsunari Takayama, is from Japan, and he's only the second Japanese champion in, if I got my facts correct, uh, 28 years correct. since uh, Satoshi Shingaki held the Bantamweight title. Um, so, so that's huge, and, and are you hoping to increase the activity from regional titles in that Asian and Pan Pacific region into actual full IBF world titles yeah, and crowning some champions? Yeah, we, we hope so. And uh, um, actually, you know, our, our regional uh, titles are feeder systems into the world ratings. So I think once we start getting more people into those world ratings from different areas, uh, again, it's lucrative for them to go to Japan. And Japan has really welcomed us back, so I think we're going to start seeing a lot of a lot more world champions from that Asia region. Maybe not right away, but within the next few years, if things progress the way they have recently, I have no doubt. Um, 
being that the convention is uh, here taking place in Germany, uh, it's, it's kind of ironic that there's a, a hot topic right now buzzing uh, within the IBF circles uh, concerning the recent IBF eliminator between Sam Solomon of Australia and Felix Sturm of Germany. Um, as, as you know, and, and as, as most readers may know, um, Solomon won the fight, but initially failed a, a post-fight um, drug test. And then a, a B sample came up clean with a lab that he took it to in the United States. Uh, is that on that topic on the table to, to reach a resolution? Uh, and, and what's the status of that at this point? Well, we tentatively have a meeting scheduled for tomorrow uh, morning. Um, we'll have Thomas Putz, the BDB president. Uh, Sam Solomon has representatives here, and Felix Sturm is going to have representatives here. I don't know if we're going to come out with a complete resolution. However, we'll be able to hear from both sides, uh, and the regulatory authorities being the BDB and the IBF. Um, we plan to make progress. Uh, we're going to move slowly. This whole doping thing that's going on in boxing is new to everyone. Um, we don't know as much as we should about it in the sport of boxing. So we're going to proceed slowly. Um, it's all new to us. We're going to get our heads together. We're going to try and come up with some kind of a resolution. As you heard today, we're taking this doping thing seriously. We've had two issues in the last 18 months that involve doping. So we're going to be working on some pretty serious doping policy. Um, we have it on paper. We're going to present it to our medical committee, who will also attend that meeting tomorrow. And we're going to see if we can come out with something. If we don't come up with a decision, we're going to be very close. I I'd like to be able to settle this with all of the parties together, but I can't say for sure that's going to happen because, I, I mean, there's rules things and legal things that we're going to have to wrangle around before we come out with it. But uh, as I said, all the players are here. We might be able to come out with something by the end of the week, but if not, it'll be shortly thereafter. I mean, we, we need to get things moving in the middleweight division again. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you had mentioned that there have been uh, a couple other doping issues within the last 18 months involving uh, IBF fighters. Um, I'm, I'm assuming one would have been the Lamont Peterson Amir Khan uh, case in that fight. Um, do you feel that there can be a sort of a precedence with what wound up happening in the resolution of that fight for this fight? And by that, I mean uh, Lamont Peterson came into that fight as the challenger. He won a very close, competitive, controversial decision, taking both the IBF's title and the WBA temporarily. Uh, in the fallout of all of that, uh, through the IBF's decisions, uh, he was able to keep your title. The WBA uh, withdrew their recognition. I don't know if you feel that there are similarities, even though, uh, I don't know, the stimulants may be different within the both cases, um, and that that may, you know, there may be precedents there that could impact uh, your decision on what will happen in this case? Actually, the only similarities there is between those, uh, these two instances is there is an alleged doping violation. Um, the Peterson situation was unique because his issue involved testosterone. There are medical uses for testosterone, which we found out when we had our independent doctor uh, look at all of this. Not so much with a stimulant. Um, so that's a big difference. It, it, it's a banned substance, but to our knowledge, uh, there is no medicinal use for it. Um, so that presents a whole different set of challenges, um, which is why I want to get everyone together. Uh, you can see we didn't rush to judgment with the Peterson situation, and I think we got the proper conclusion. Um, this is a whole new set of challenges. We don't want to rush the judgment in this either. That's why it, I think it's better to move slowly and deliberately and have all the facts instead of just putting something out that's not accurate or unfair to either of the fighters. Mm -hmm. um, lastly, just want to touch on a topic that uh, has been buzzing around the internet a bit. Um, 
Your uh, counterpart at the WBC, uh, President Jose Suleiman, has been calling uh, for a joining of so many entities in boxing, and especially uh, his fellow sanctioning bodies, uh, in uh, standing up against the, uh, what he is proposing as a, uh, a monopolization or an attempted monopolization of, or an entry into the professional sport by AIBA, the, Associ the International Association of Amateur Boxing. Um, uh, President Suleiman has said he hasn't really uh, gotten a response from his counterparts uh, in the IBF, WBA, WBO. Um, are you aware of that issue that's going on, do you, and do you have any feelings about it at this point yet? We, we've been monitoring the situation. Um, we haven't come out with any strong statements because we're still trying to garner information from the folks at AIBA. Um, I had an opportunity to speak to some of the people at USA Boxing and you know that USA Boxing at one point was banned by AIBA. Um, I don't like what they're doing. Uh, I don't like the whole concept of them trying to monopolize the sport of professional boxing. Um, at this point, do I think that they're a threat to the WBA, the WBC, the WBO, and myself? I don't think so. But uh, these people have a lot of influence with a lot of people. Um, we're going to monitor it. Um, I will tell you this. If President Suleiman decides that he's going to pose some kind of legal challenge to it, we're going to join him. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to talk to President Suleiman about this personally. I've had some brief conversations with President Valcarcel and Gilberto Jesus Mendoza, the executive director of the WBA. But just preliminary discussions. But I, I think all of us, um, to some degree, are against it. We, we just the whole monopolization concept. Uh, the four major sanctioning bodies, as well as the IBO, we all work together on a, on a variety of issues. Um, my position is not as strong as President Suleiman's because I don't have all the facts that he has. He's been sharing them well with us. Uh, again, I don't think that they're a serious threat to our organizations. It, it's I just don't think it's good for boxing their introduction into it. All right. Well, thank you for your time, President of Peoples. Uh, we look forward to the rest of the convention here and uh, to conventions in the future, and good luck in the next 30 years. Thanks, Robert. Always a pleasure having you here. All righty.